next section shows us needles used for vascular access. There are many different kinds of needles available, the most common of which are uh, long femoral needles of 16 to 18 gauge diameters and shorter micropuncture needles used for both femoral and radial access. In general, the brachial artery should not be an access site of uh, first, second, or third choice. For the access site needles for the femoral artery, it is common to have a marker on the plastic hub indicating which direction the bevel is facing. There may be a protective shield or uh, flange which makes handling the needle easier. The needles are of about two and a half uh, inches in length. For the micropuncture needles, these are generally 21 gauge needles. Some have a long segment, others are short segments. The micropuncture needles create a smaller entry hole and less back bleeding is uh, identified, but they are uh, excellent for radial access and can be used for femoral access. Vascular sheaths are used to maintain access once vascular access through needle puncture and wire insertion has been accomplished. These vascular sheaths are, they come in varying lengths and varying diameters. They have a valved end through which the catheter passes easily and prevents back bleeding of blood. The sheaths are generally color coded, uh, ranging from eight or nine all the way down to four French in diameter. The sheath comprises three major parts. It has a straight shaft through which the catheters pass, and on the end of this is the valve accepting the dilator. This dilator is manufactured with a central hole accommodating 0.038 inch guide wires, and in some cases the sheaths are designed specifically to accommodate only the micropuncture guide wires of 0.018 inches. Attached to the side of the valve is the sidearm, uh, which can be used to flush the sheath, and it has a stopcock at the end of it to control bleeding or permit introduction of medications. These sheaths are flexible and strong, but they can be kinked if they are flexed to too great a degree, and they are generally coated for easy entry and safety. Guide wires are spring-coiled, soft safety guide wires with tips that can be flexed and are introduced either through the access needle, through the sheath, through catheters, and are used to advance catheters and sheaths and also to exchange catheters and sheaths once vascular access has been obtained. These wires vary in diameter, in consistency, in weight, in strength, and are designed for specific applications. The most common guide wire used is a 38 flexible J-tipped guide wire in a 180 centimeter length. These guide wires come in 0 0.035, 0 0.022, and even fine angioplasty type guide wires in 0 0.018 inches. They are flexible at the tip which enters the body and stiff at the other end. Exchange guide wires come in 300 centimeter lengths, which permits the operator to position the guide wire in the distal part of the heart or arteries and then exchange for different catheters. Catheters are long, thin tubes like pieces of spaghetti made of plastic. The designation JL4 or JL3.5 indicate Judkins left four centimeter indicating the distance between the tip and the secondary curve. The ventriculography catheters, uh, the most common one in use is that of the pigtail catheter, which has an end hole, the curved pigtail portion, and just proximal to that curved pigtail portion, six side holes are uh, punched to permit contrast to exit the catheter through these side holes and a little bit through the end hole so that a cloud of contrast material forms rather than small jets which can irritate the myocardium or even in some cases perforate this. These pigtail catheters can be uh, obtained in either a straight configuration or a 145 degree angled configuration. For the Judkins right, the JR4, there are generally very few indications to use a shorter JL secondary curve. 
Specially curved catheters are also available. These include the multi-purpose catheter, a right bypass graft catheter, a left or right internal mammary catheter. Cardiac angiography is most commonly performed by manual injection through a cardiac manifold. These manifolds may manifest with two, three, or four ports, which are aligned by stopcocks, the handle of the stopcock indicating the off position. The three stopcocks most commonly used in a three-bar manifold contain the pressure port, the flush port, and the contrast port. The clear syringe is important to appreciate any air bubbles that may be accidentally aspirated, and a rotating connector on each end of the manifold makes this an easy tool to use, permitting uh, flexibility uh, in the operator's positioning. It is important to always keep the end of the manifold syringe at at least 30 degrees elevated from the table so that any bubbles that do enter the manifold will reside at the plunger end and not be injected into the patient. An indeflator is coupled with a angioplasty guide wire introducer and a angioplasty torque tool. The torque tool is color-coded. It is a small pin vise which permits rotation of the angioplasty guide wire. The angioplasty balloon is inflated with an indeflator device which provides atmospheres of pressure to inflate the small balloon. This is delivered through the manometer which is filled with a mixture of contrast material and saline and delivered up to atmospheres ranging from one to two atmospheres all the way up to 20 to 22 atmospheres of pressure. Uh, this is easily to see visibly and is designed for a quick inflation and quick deflation. The patient enters the cath lab and is transferred to the x-ray table. The nurses then prepare the patient for the imaging and vascular access. The electrocardiographic leads are applied to the chest. The patient is checked for a working IV. The emergency equipment are prepared for the patient. The groin preparation is then performed for those patients having femoral access. At this time, if radial access was planned, both femoral and radial approaches would be prepared. The patient uh, hair is clipped. Chloroseptic solution is then applied to both groins, and finally, draping will occur shortly thereafter. Sterile technique for Applying the chloroprep is used for both sides and the drapes will then be applied by the sterile scrub tech. The sterile drapes have two holes uh, cut in them which are positioned directly over both femoral arteries. Uh, these holes permit access to the skin with minimal exposure of any other area. Assistance drape the entire table so that there is no area of the operating field which is not sterile. It is important to position the holes over the femoral artery and vein, and this is done by palpation and slight adjustment of the access ports. Once the drapes are in place, the connecting tubing for the injector system is passed off the field, and connection to the angiographic injector is made pressure manifolds are connected, and then access is obtained. <laughs>